Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty good stuff. First up, stealth phase over. Why Wall Street FOMO will make 20K Bitcoin look cheap. This is a fantastic article written by Alan Scott, and it looks at what is going on behind the scenes as everything in the background is being accumulated secretly, but not so much anymore. Also, how about that election, huh? Well, blockchain voting is the alternative for trusted democratic elections. We're going to take a look at what are the options and what we can do, hopefully, next time. And we're going to do a Q of the day from Lucas. And Lucas asked the question is, is everything outside of Bitcoin a scam? And I've got just the guy to answer that question. So we'll go over all that. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is Saturday, the 14th of November. Looks like it's 11 a.m. Texas time. Everything's a little bit of a slide, but uh, that is to be expected in the crypto asset game. We're not going to go up forever. There's going to be a little bit of uh, peaks and valleys, and today is one of those days. So Bitcoin is down almost 2% and has slumped below the 16K mark. It looks like we're at 15.8. So um, not surprising. I actually would be surprised if it didn't fall down a little bit more. Ethereum is at 450, but hey, still sticking there. So I'm pretty happy about that. Down two and a half percent and uh, not too bad. Tether still around 17.7 billion. So that's pretty great. XRP is still at 26 cents. And yesterday I said, hey, congratulations to all the XRP holders. And someone said, this is the first time I've heard you say anything positive about XRP. Now, if I've been very tough on XRP, it's because I'm one of those people who has bought it a long time ago. I think XRP could do something. I think it could be great. I just, uh, there has to be a lot of things to happen for that to happen, to actually uh, make it. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. But uh, it really is to me just disappointing right now. He's like that talented kid on your football team that could do so much. Just hasn't really done it, but uh, we'll see what happens. Chain legs down one and a half percent. Looks like it's around 1250, up 2.7 for the week, so that's not too bad. Hopefully, it can hit a 13 dollar mark, and off we go. Bitcoin Cash, nothing. Polka dot, not too much. Uh, ooh, Litecoin's down five percent. 3.7 for Cardano, two percent for. Uh, what is up? Let's just let's just ask that question. What's up? Uh, Uniswap is up. Hey, it's almost at uh, almost at four. I'll take it. 44 percent for the week. Fantastic. And of course, Celsius is almost going to hit uh, $2. Actually, it's $1.90, so 3.7 for the day, uh, 2.4. But remember, it did take a big hit, or a little bit of a hit, from yesterday uh, because there was some issues with the website and the app and DNS propagation and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into it. Watch yesterday's video. I'll explain it all in detail. And uh, that's what's going on. So what else is there? Anything? Geez, synthetics down 7%. That's pretty bad. Compound up 8%, 21% for the week. So congratulations, all you compound holders. Uh, looks like you're one of the few winners for today. All right, let's break into today's top story. So first up, stealth phase over. Is this what's going on as far as Wall Street FOMO? And this is the kind of impression I've gotten because when I, in 2017, Nobody in the institutions really talked about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. It was just kind of like, that's dumb, that's stupid, and uh, no one would ever do that. And uh, even the banks were, and would talk about firing their employees if they invested into it. But now it seems like Wall Street and big institutions and big legendary players are like, yeah, makes sense. So I think if they were accumulating secretly, P.S. I think they were. Uh, the cat's out of the bag. And I think there's going to be some fireworks in 2021. It's what I've always said, but uh, we will see. So this is a fantastic article by Alan Scott. So let's see what he's got to say. So price of Bitcoin is up 125% year to date, even though it's down today. Not too bad. Making it once again the best performing asset just that has been for the past decade. And if you don't know, uh, Bitcoin to a lesser extent, Ethereum is uh, one of the top, or not, if not the top, uh, assets uh, for the last decade. And also, if you can take a look at it of all time, it's uh, beaten gold, it's beaten any stock, oil, anything like that. And it's why I'm heavily invested into it. But the question is, is Wall Street here? Well, they're saying that it's not here yet in droves. It is here, in my opinion, but just not to where it should be. And it's going to change. It's going to change. We're going to talk about it in a second. So it goes on to say, remember 2017? Well, it was fantastic, except for when the CME introduced their cash settled Bitcoin futures right at the peak in December 2017. And then boom, everything crashed. And if you're if you're into uh, what you thought could have happened or why it crashed, this was one of the things that people point to. CME introduced uh, cash settled futures. But there was other, a lot of other factors in there. I think it was it was just too much too soon. It wasn't really built on you know anything concrete. It was on shaky ground. It was all white papers, vapor, and hope. So I think these days we're in a little a much better position, in my opinion. 
And then they talk about Google searches for Bitcoin uh, pretty much tell the whole story. And uh, interest over time, you can see from here, this is uh, in 2017. Actually, I'm just gonna show you. Uh, here is, I pulled this up, this is the, the Google Trends. And Google Trends is not gonna, it's not gonna tell you the exact amount of searches right here. You can do that in AdWords if you do a bunch of ads and such, but for here, it's just gonna tell you like over time. So if you're looking at the last 12 months, on a scale of zero to 100, uh, on May 10th to May 16th, that's when it was at the highest amount of searches. Now today, we're looking at 72. So, and you can see it's, uh, you know, done pretty well over a little bit of time. But what I want you to take a look at is this. So, we're, I mean, just think about this, first of all, right, before I show you. Uh, it's been on the minds of everybody. It's been on CNBC. It's been, been on the media. It's been on the uh, the hearts and minds of the big investors and legendary traders and all those things. So you think like, oh, this is a pretty big thing. Uh, well, not so, because look at this trend from 2004 to uh, today. Of course, it's flat. Nothing really happened back then. This was the peak. The absolute peak was December 2017. And again, it wasn't built in anything. It was very shaky, in my opinion. And then here's where we are right now. We're at a whopping 19. So out of 0 to 100, we're at 19. What do you think is going to happen in 2021? Now, again, this is just Google searches, but it really does play a part and lets you peer into the minds of what people are thinking and searching. And if this is any indicator, we got a long way to go. But while the public is largely unaware, several wealthy investors are heralding Bitcoin as a new asset class, like we're talking about P.T. Che, Paul Tudor Jones, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy, and Stanley Druck in Miller have made waves in 2020, revealing their positions. Jones said investing in Bitcoin is like investing in Apple early. Saylor uh, from MicroStrategy say that his company, MicroStrategy, would bought up 425 million and would hold it for 100 years, calling it the world's best collateral. Not only on top of that, Saylor also said that he feels no respect for any traders because he's like, what are you doing? You're stupid. Just hold on to it. It'll be fine. That's his opinion. I think if you want to trade, go right ahead. Uh, also, Drunken Miller. I say Drunken Miller like that because I always call him Drunken Miller and people are like, it's not Drunken Miller. It's drunk. So, okay. I always slow down. Drunken Miller. The latest big name Bitcoin convert now argues that if the gold bet works, the Bitcoin bet will probably work better. And as Tyler Winklevoss put it, Bitcoin is better at being gold than gold itself. And I couldn't agree more. Also, uh, for all the gold bugs out there, just remember this, gold is pretty great. I mean, I own gold, silver, Bitcoin. Uh, I think everybody should own gold, silver, Bitcoin. But if you're looking at asymmetrical investments, gold is not where it's at. Gold is only up 23%, which is a monstrous year for uh, precious metals. But in crypto, that's like a Tuesday. So it's not a big deal, uh, but for gold bugs, it is. Gold is up 23% in 2020 during a year of global economic upheaval. And remember, it came down to massive money printing from the Fed. The stimulus package was in the trillions of dollars on top of a, a global pandemic and gold went up 23%. Remember, gold is supposed to be a hedge for like economic collapse and it still only went up 23. So I'm just saying, you know, gold is great, but uh, you know, you should really look at Bitcoin if you're on the fence and you're here, welcome. <laughs> Individuals who bought Bitcoin 10 or even five years ago would most likely agree. The end of Bitcoin stealth phase. This is where it gets interesting. Bitcoin is becoming particularly attractive as a hedge against inflation, which is all but guaranteed by the U.S., of course. Federal Reserve likes to print. And uh, if you're any, uh, uh, have been looking at the news, um, Jerome Powell, the head of the um, Federal Reserve, states that, hey, we're going to keep printing. He didn't say we're going to keep printing, but he's like, we're going to use all the tools at our disposal and more economic relief is on the horizon or something like that. I paraphrase a little bit, but you get the drift. There's going to be more printing and there's more printing. There's more. That's quantitative easing. There's more for the dollar to recede as far as the value. And it's also going to cause a little bit of turmoil. Great opportunity for gold, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, digital assets. But uh, getting back to the story, unlike gold, Bitcoin is absolutely scarce. We keep finding more gold. That's just the truth. We will never find more Bitcoin. It's not like you're going to go out there and like, oh, where did I place that Bitcoin? Check under the couch. Oh, there it is. No, it's only 21 million. That's it. That's all it ever will be. So this is a great little image of, of uh, valuation and stealth phase. 
versus the <laughs> I didn't see this the blow off phase is pretty funny so the stealth phase is when people are like just hoarding and kind of just slowly accumulating which we all knew they were doing we all knew JP Morgan was doing that they you know diamond is such a liar he's gonna say out in the in the front go we're not doing anything I'm gonna fire everybody and the background is like hey Pete you make sure you bought that Bitcoin yes we did sir and then off we go so like when the stealth phase they don't want to tell you what they're doing but at some point, the cat does get out of the bag, and that's why you got the PTJs, you the Drucken Millers, uh, the micro strategies, and all the big players going, hey, we're buying right now, just let you know. And uh, that's it. So we're at this, we're, I think we're past that. That only makes sense. So now we're starting to see a little takeoff, which we saw, right? I mean, Bitcoin is up 125% for the year. That only makes sense. Now we're going to start to see what it's going to be a little bit of a sell off. And then that's where people, the weak hands, not me and you, uh, weak hands are going to start to sell and go oh it's it's, it's dropping i gotta get out now because it's never gonna but those are the people that don't understand how valuable crypto and digital assets really are and how it's going to change everything and it's going to be 10x bigger maybe 100x bigger uh than the internet revolution in the, in the late 90s so they're going to sell off and then people are like me and you are going to buy up because we know what time it is and then this is going to do this 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 the problem is this is the problem for me. I don't know what's the problem for you, but I made this mistake in 2017, which is when everything becomes overvalued and the RSI is like super, super overbought for days, weeks, or however long it takes, when to kind of time it. And the best thing I can tell you is watch my bull run strategy where I talk about, you know, the different price points. I'm going to try to take profits. I will never sell all my cryptocurrency, but there's going to come a point where I need to because I don't want to do this bag holding nonsense like I did for like two or three years. It just only makes sense. So if this looks familiar to you, it's happened over and over and over again. It happened in 2017. I think it's going to happen again in 2021. Could be wrong. Let me understand in the comments section. Moving on, we'll finish up. And this is just a quote. just echoes what I've been talking about. With uh, Drucken Miller, Michael Saylor, and more listed companies jumping into the Bitcoin markets, it's quite clear that we're at the early stage of a new bull cycle. Well, sure. And this was a really great paragraph right here. It states, in addition to having the aforementioned investors have also noticed that Bitcoin's fundamentals, network activity, and on-ramp infrastructure, e.g. the Cash App and PayPal, have all significantly improved since 2017. That's the truth. Uh, I remember in 2017, you, I mean, you can get it at Coinbase and Binance and some other places, but there were so many people that Coinbase shut down from taking new uh, customers and Binance did the same thing. I remember people were selling their Binance accounts on like eBay or, or wherever they were selling them. I forgot what it was. And there was nothing in them. They just said, you want an account? Well, you got to pay me X amount of dollars, hundreds, thousands of dollars. It was crazy. So that is not the case these days. Other investors will also eventually realize that a small allocation of capital into Bitcoin significantly boosts portfolio returns. Last month, the co-founder of 10P Holdings, Dan Tapiero, noted this. And this is a smart phrase. It says only 3% Bitcoin positions in the past five years would have increased performance of a 60-40 portfolio from 6.8 to 10.2%. Imagine that. Imagine when all the advisors start to talk to their customers and be like, look, Pete, here's what's going on with, with, with your portfolio. Um, didn't do so hot this year, but there's a new asset. It's really not new. It's like you know, 12 years old now, and uh, we can offset it. It's a little bit risky, I suppose, but it is the best performing asset of all time. So maybe we could put a little bit in there, like like I said, two to three percent, and we can offset some of these losses that uh, we're going to see, especially what's going to happen in the next year or two to come, because the stock market is probably going to crash. If they can do that, and they they recommend that to all the people that they have. Um, this could be a huge boom. And not only on top of that, uh, the SEC has just given clearance for banks and different institutions to start to custody Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. We talked about this yesterday. So uh, this could be a big boom. And I would think that if you're a advisor, an investment advisor, and you don't recommend this, I think you're doing your customers a disservice. I'm just saying, because you could have been up mightily. I mean, you could have been in gold at 25%, but you could have been going in Bitcoin and been up 125. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. At this rate, investment fund clients will begin asking the question such as this. Why is my nephew's Bitcoin stash outperforming my 401k, my FANG stocks, my Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook? Uh, why is it 
uh, outperforming uh, gold. And Warren Buffett put together, how do I gain exposure to Bitcoin? And this only makes sense, right? People are gonna start to look at this, and it's especially the older generation, which really has all the money. The baby boomers have all the money, and then uh, the Gen X or the millennials, they're second, third, fourth, fifth place, whatever you wanna say it. But now when you start to look at it and just kind of break it down, institutions are here. They're gonna to start to really gobble up a lot before the average investor uh, can get into it. I mean, we've got affiliate assets, a trillion asset under management, TD Ameritrade with one trillion. You've got the big gold bugs Van Eck who said, look, gold is better, or Bitcoin is better than gold. And here's the proof, and they put out a PDF not too long ago. You got Grayscale buying up everything out there. You got the PTJs out there, the legendary investments and traders and going, hey, I'm gonna put my money into Bitcoin, uh, Druck and Miller as well. And on top of all the different public companies who are making money hand over fist, look at MicroStrategy. They just invested 425 million a couple months ago. They're at 606 million. Do you not think that other companies are gonna look at this and go, wow, what are we doing? Our money is on fire and everybody else is making a ton of money. We should probably get into this. It only makes sense. I'm just saying. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.